Hey, uh, today I want to talk about gold box conjecture, which is a famous open problem. A lot of you have probably heard of it. It's simply that every even integer can be expressed as the sum of two primes. So for example, 16 is an even integer and it can be expressed as um, 15 and 1, now 14 and 2, no, 13 and 3. 13 plus 3 is 16, they're both primes. Now this has been verified up to a, a really large number, and we believe it to be true, but it's uh, one of those big open problems that we've never solved. What I want to do today is kind of give you a maybe more intuitive explanation of this conjecture, even though everyone understands addition, I think that um, by viewing it in a little bit of a different way, you can understand more uh, the symmetry that's behind it. And so that's what I hope to do is, is give you an alternate definition of the Goldbach conjecture and an alternate way of thinking about it. So here we simply have a number line uh, from 0 to 20 and a little bit above. I want to emphasize right now that ooh, these drawings are not going to be drawn to scale. They're just to give you an idea of what's going on. Let's go ahead and add the prime numbers between 0 and 20, started with 2 and ending with 19. And now the midpoint between 0 and 20 is 10. And what Goldbach's conjecture is saying is that 20 can be expressed as the sum of two primes. In this case, it's 17 and 3. But another way, another way of expressing that is that if you look at the integers that are symmetrical around 10, uh, there has to be some pair symmetric about 10 that are both prime. For example, in this case, 7 and 13 are both 3 away. They're a symmetric pair of primes, both 3 away from 10, and consequently 7 plus 13 equals 20. Um, now, what we can do then is think about this: the right section of this number line from 10 to 20. And if we took that whole line and just rotated it around so it fell on, rotated it about 10 so it fell on the uh, other side of the graph, that two primes would collide. Basically, in this case, if we took that whole section and rotated it about the 10, we would see that 13 would collide with 7. And so what Goldbach's conjecture is saying is that no matter what uh, number on the number line we rotated about, you're always going to have a collision of this sort, where two primes fall on top of each other about any integer. Here again, we can see that if I took that same number line and inverted it so that the um, sequence of primes were the other way, uh, you can see that where all of these prime pairs that add to 20 line up. In this case, 3 collides with 17, 7 collides with 13, and again on the other side. And again, this is not drawn perfectly to scale, so that's why 7 and 13 don't look like they're right on top of each other. So I'm going to clear this number line once again. And what my take-home point really is, uh, is that Goldbach's conjecture is equivalent to saying that the, the composite integers can never follow the same pattern as the primes backwards as the primes do forward. So what we're going to see now is if it's ever the case that uh, composite integers backwards from some number are in the same pattern as the primes go forward from zero, we'll have broken Goldbach's conjecture. Here's an arbitrary number line up to n, and we're going to say that these red dots represent the primes. Again, there's obviously more, more than four primes for, you know, most any n. But um, in this case, let's just pretend that this is the sequence of primes up to n. Anything that's not prime is composite. So here, any, any dot that isn't red is going to be gray. But I've only drawn in the four gray composite numbers that are actually make the pattern backwards that the primes make forward. So you can see forward, it looks like we have one prime, a gap, another prime, a gap, and then two twin primes. And backwards, similarly with the composite integers, we have the same pattern. But now we can see that about n over 2, any pair of integers that are symmetric about this point are either comprised of a prime and a composite or two composites. There's never a prime and a prime. Um, so in this case, there are no two prime integers that add up to n. Again, this is a constructed scenario, but my point that I want to express is that the Goldbach's conjecture is a statement about the sequence of primes and their pattern and uh, how the composite integers, basically the non-primes, cannot have the same pattern backwards. Thanks for watching this video. I would appreciate any feedback and uh, happy holidays.